Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So here let me tell you about a very interesting long-term strategy that can provide some really excellent results and one very successful studio currently doing it. And it's also a strategy that you or I can follow, it is not limited to just big studios. If your goal is to make money from your games, then I think this is a pretty great strategy to follow. A while ago I got a comment that got me thinking about this topic. I made a video where I was playing and talking about my game from 9 years ago, GameCorp DX. It's one of my most successful games of all time, it sold a ton, it was very successful. So in that video, there was a comment very interesting that relates to basically game genres in all the games that I've made. For Game Corp DX, this is a management game. It's a genre that I've done several times. So I have Game Corp DX. I've also made Blueprint Tycoon, which is also pretty successful. I made Ninja Tycoon, which is also decently successful. And Battle Royale Tycoon, which was also quite interesting. Personally, I love this genre, both as a player and as a developer. I enjoy playing these games and they have been some of my most successful games. But then I've also made strategy games like my Survivor Squad series. I made a really interesting action game with Hyper Knights. And my last game, Dinky Guardians, is all about factory automation. So I've made several games in very different genres across my entire portfolio. With that, here is the very interesting comment. But before that, the Unity New Year sale is currently ongoing. If you need anything from assets, tools, visuals, sound effects, music, and pretty much anything, if so, then go ahead and pick it up. For some quick highlights, I always highly recommend Feel, great asset for polishing your games. Text Animator is also excellent if your game has any kind of text. Easy Save is great if you just want a save system that works. If you have tons of assets all over the place and the asset inventory is a must-have. Colorize Pro is great for taking your assets and making them look completely different. Or if you have some Unreal assets, this tool can help you convert to and from Unity. Check out everything on sale with the link in the description. Also stay up to date with my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is where I cover the latest Game Dev news and interesting articles that I come across every week. Things like this awesome free multiplayer Unity ebook, or how much is a Steam Daily Deal worth, learn the two paths you can take to do game dev, or how this Parker game made 750k in just one week. Check it out to the link in the description. So here CodeDev says, Hey CM, you seem to be really good at making Tycoon games. Both this game, Game Court DX, and Looper Tycoon did very well. So that makes me curious, why don't you spend more time on this genre since you clearly have a good understanding of design and the balancing behind it? I'm guessing some of it comes down to just wanting to make other projects, but I was curious if you ever felt there's a line between fun projects and what would bring in income that you know how to do well. Obviously I'm not talking about a scenario to extreme sellout where you basically copy paste titles with minor changes. A good example would be Let's Build the Zoo, Let's Build Dungeon. The latter newer game seems very promising and takes ideas from the first successful title whilst expanding upon it. I'm always up for the idea of making something new and exciting, but also realize that as a game's developer, income is important. I'm curious on your opinion on this. So you have this a very interesting question that you might want to ask yourself as a developer. In theory, if your goal is to just maximize revenue on the long term, in theory, then you should probably stick with similar genres. Doing it that way, you can build upon your own knowledge and also build upon your own audience. If your sequels are on a similar genre, you can get sales by just telling about your new game to the audience of your previous game. So financially speaking, that is a very smart strategy that is likely going to be the best strategy you have in terms of finding success on the long term. Here on my answer, I did say that how the answer is basically indeed how I do have different ideas that I'd love to try making. So in theory, if my goal was to maximize revenue, then yep, the best strategy would be to find a genre you like and are good at and just keep making games in that genre. So in my case, making lots of tycoons with different themes would probably be an excellent long-term strategy, but I also like all kinds of things. So automation games, strategy, action, and so on. So because of that, personally, I don't think I will ever stick with just one single genre. So for me, it's very much always a balance between finding a project I want to work on versus something that I'm confident will do quite well. Although, of course, the best scenario is when you can get both, when you can find an idea that you want to work on and has quite a lot of potential. One example of a studio that was found intentionally on this very strategy is Two Point Studios. From the very beginning, they said how their goal was, first of all, to make a specific type of game. Games very much in the old style of the Bullfrog management games. That's mainly Team Hospital and Team Park but also Dungeon Keeper and Populous. And secondly, it's to make these types of games in a consistent theme. So the entire goal from the very beginning was to make lots of games with different themes all on the same two-point universe. The studio was founded in 2016, and since then they have made two games. They started with Two Point Hospital, very much a love letter to people who love playing Theme Hospital, like myself. This was a very, very successful game. Next they made Two Point Campus. Again, very much the same management style of game, the same silly style of humor, the same visual style, so a lot of the things the same, but a completely different theme, this time by making a campus a university. This one also did quite well. And now they are currently working on Two Point Museum. Again, same style, very things are quite similar, but a completely different theme, which of course makes for a completely different game. This time it's all about a museum, so again, lots of silliness, interesting visuals, and the whole thing will probably be on the same style as the previous game. Basically the hope is that as people play their games, like the people that enjoy Two Point Hospital, those people will enjoy their style of game making, then that will hopefully transition to sales of their newer styles. So technically for every new game they launch, they can start from a higher baseline. Their two-point museum game currently has around 7,000 followers. 
So probably around 80,000 wishlists, that is definitely a very good amount. Their plan is to keep making games in this genre, this style, and really just explore different themes every time. Considering how the studio was founded in 2016, and they're still going strong now, 8 years later, it seems like this strategy is actually working out quite well for them. So this is very much a studio that is following that strategy from the start, make the same type of game, although obviously making different games, in this case, in case of making management games, in this, as long as you change the theme, the game is completely different. So keeping the same style but a different theme allows you to build upon your knowledge and build upon your audience so that hopefully every game that you make, you're not exactly starting from scratch when it comes to marketing and finding an audience. So this studio very much started following this strategy right from the very beginning. As soon as it was found, it was found with this idea in mind. But another studio that did not necessarily start this strategy in mind at first, but rather just stumbled upon it is Zektronics. It is not a studio that makes games on a very specific genre. Again, this case, not necessarily intentionally so, it's just what happened. You've got Space Cam, Super Huge Head, TIS 100, Shenzhen IO, Opus Magnum, Exapunks, and a bunch more. The rough genre for pretty much all of these games are essentially puzzle games for programmers. Every time they put out a brand new game, they already had a previous audience from a previous game. Since the genre was similar, they were already going to be a little bit interested. Because of that, they didn't have to start marketing every new game completely from scratch. They already had a nice baseline, which is really an excellent advantage that you can have nowadays. Nowadays, marketing is so difficult, it is so important, that just having a tiny little leg up can help you so much. By the way, I highly recommend the podcast Designer Notes with Zach Bart. That's the founder behind the Zachtronic Games. Really excellent podcast, really great to listen to. And of course, yet another massive studio, or rather in this case, publisher, that follows kind of the same strategy is of course Playway. They make tons of games, and a lot of them on the very specific genre of being like simulating something. A lot of these are pretty much you are in first person doing some kind of simulation of some kind of job or something. So Crime Scene Cleaner, House Flipper, Car Mechanic, Contraband Police, The Gunsmith Simulator, Thief Simulator, Car Manufacturer, Gold Mining, and a bunch more. So this is a publisher, it's actually a very, very successful publisher. And so based upon this strategy of targeting one specific niche, and then just making tons of games to satisfy the audience for that one specific niche. So yeah, back to the original comment. I think this is an excellent question that you should ask yourself as a developer. Do you want to follow the strategy that likely has the best odds of finding financial success over the long term? Or do you prefer to just have lots of different ideas that you want to try making? Both those can be valid options, but definitely do ask yourself this question and make a nice decision for yourself. In my case, I really like exploring different game ideas. For my next game, I'm planning to get back to Total War Liberation. I love the concept behind that game. I really want to explore making an open world turn-based game. I really want to explore with turn-based crafting, automation, building, and a bunch more. It seems to me like a really nice mix of all kinds of game genres and ideas. So this game idea sounds very appealing to me, and I've never done any game kind of like it. However, at the same time, if something really drastic happened to me and I absolutely need my next game to be a hit, if so, then yep, I would probably pick my next game as something that I know would do well. I would probably pick some kind of simulator game, some kind of management game, something that I know how to do and I know can do well in today's market. Also, like I said in my reply, of course, the best scenario is when you can get both, when you can find an idea that you want to work on and has quite a lot of potential. Another video I highly recommend you watch is this one by Jonas Tyroller on how making successful indie games is simple but not easy. In there specifically he talks about how prototyping is very important, how he prototyped tons of different ideas before he came up with Thronefall. So if you want to try to achieve this possible best scenario where you can get both an idea you want to work on and has a lot of potential, if so then one great way to get that is to just do a ton of prototyping, try out all kinds of ideas until you find one that does match both these clauses. So yep, this is definitely a very interesting strategy and a very interesting question you should definitely ask yourself. Check it out to the link in the description. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.